Hey everyone, it's SJ, and welcome back to Something Different Sunday. I'm very excited to bring you Lorcana. It's Disney's new card game, and it was released August 18th. Before we get into the opening, I'll do a brief overview of Lorcana. Lorcana is a Disney-themed trading card game licensed to and created by Ravensburger. There has been a ton of hype around this game, and rightfully so. Each pack has an MSRP of $5.99, but a booster box seems to be around $150. However, there were significant cuts to local game store allocations, so right now, some of these are selling for $300 a box. I was able to get this for $220 at my LGS, which was definitely more than I wanted to pay for a booster box. A case of these comes with four booster boxes, and each booster box contains 24 packs. A small little interesting note here, these boxes aren't actually wrapped, and they have a paper seal, which is an interesting design choice. As far as cards we'd like to pull, there are a few different types of rarities and you can tell by the symbol at the bottom middle of the card. We have regular rares, super rares, legendary rares, and then we also have the case hit and enchanted rare, which is an alternate art version of a rare. Any enchanted rare would be fantastic to pull, and since these cases are smaller than other types of games, there's actually a decent chance of pulling them. The legendaries we are looking for are Rapunzel, Elsa, Belle, and there should be around four legendaries per booster box. Finally, some of the supers and regular rares have good value, such as Tinkerbell and Lilo. There are other high value cards, but speaking of cards that you get, you get a promo card for every booster box, which is just a Tinkerbell and it's a common. I don't think there's anything special about it. Additionally, let's take a look at the actual packs themselves. Overall, I think they're very appealing and the design looks good, plus they're very easy to open, which I appreciate. I do want to note that all the prices in this video are artificially high due to the shortages from printing, as well as just the overall demand, so the numbers in this video don't really matter, but I added them anyway. Alright, that's enough of an overview, let's start opening. All packs contain 6 commons, 3 uncommons, 2 rares of any variety, and 1 cold foil of any rarity. And I have to say, overall, these cards look pretty good, and the back looks really nice as well. However, one thing that does bother me is that the cardstock is quite thin, almost like playing cards, which I honestly would have expected a little nicer from a Disney product. And now we're into our uncommons. After price checking all of this, it looks like none of the commons or uncommons have a value of $2 or greater, unless you get a cold foil variation of it. And here we have our very first rare, Part of Your World. This card isn't worth anything, but it is nice that they give you two rares per pack. And then after this, we have our cold foil. Now, cold foil is just a foil card that has a very flat foiling to it. And I have to say, these look really nice. They're very well done. And then finally, we have a token, and you can put these together and make a little image. I'm still learning how to play this game, but the resources are kind of interesting. If you look at the top left hand side, this card has a 3 and then a hexagon, while this card has a 2 and then a circular symbol. Cards with that circular symbol can be played face down and treated as your resource, and they're kind of like lands in Magic the Gathering, where you tap them or exert them to use a resource and help pay for costs. Cards that just have a hexagon cannot be used as a resource. And here we have our first rare, which is Scar. And we have a huge pool, Rapunzel. This is a legendary rare. And next we have our cold foil rare, Sword of Truth. And I have to say, this was a little shocking to see, but there's quite a few manufacturing defects here. You can see a giant print line across this, and a lot of the other cold foils you'll see have this as well. So it was a little disappointing to see. Just to finish the thought on resources though, if you play a card face down, that character card can no longer be treated as a character card, it's just a resource at that point. So I guess there's some level of decision making there. So I'm excited to play this game and learn more about it.
And here we have our very first super rare, Robin Hood. You're gonna get around 12 super rares per box, so there are a good amount. Even with the manufacturing defects, those cold foils look amazing. That Aladdin card looks great, and I feel like this is what a cold foil should look like. Not the etched cards you see in Magic the Gathering that you can't even read. If you're looking for Lorcana right now, chances are you're not going to find it because it's either sold out or incredibly expensive right now, around $300 a box. If you're looking for this set, I would recommend just holding off a little bit because another wave of printing is coming soon and it should fulfill the allocations that a lot of game stores have. They were just cut significantly, so there's just an artificial scarcity problem right now and that will go away as more is printed and these prices will come down significantly. And here we have another cold foil rare, where this one is worth like four times the price of the original rare. So some of these command pretty large premiums. And here we have our first super rare cold foil of the Genie. It's a nice looking card and it has a decent value. However, all of these values are just made up anyway. Once this product stabilizes in availability, we'll see what these prices end up leveling out at. I plan to actually update the comments with 
prices three months from now, just to show how these have either fallen or possibly risen. Here we have a nice board wipe, be prepared, it banishes all characters on the field. That's always a great card to have, and just in general this pack was very nice, lots of good hits, and it puts us in the profit zone, which is pretty impressive for a first time opening.
Well, I'm not quite sure how to judge this product just yet. This was a great return on the box, which was quite surprising. We also got Rapunzel, which was a very nice pool, but these prices will fall significantly in the near future. I don't feel like this was a particularly good box, as we didn't get an Enchanted Rare or a Legendary Gold Foil, but there were tons of $5 to $10 cards in this opening. I haven't had the chance to play this game yet, so I can't say whether it's good or not, but we'll see how the organized play develops and long-term support for the game goes. As of now, I don't think this will be the Magic the Gathering killer many people thought it would be, but I do think it has potential for longevity if they make good future decisions. I'm curious if they'll stick with the animation for all art, and how they'll incorporate Star Wars and Marvel. Ultimately, this was pretty cool, but I would absolutely suggest waiting until more product hits the market so you're not overpaying. Anyway, if you enjoyed Something Different Sunday, then please like and subscribe as I always appreciate the support. And thank you to everyone for helping me to get over 150 subscribers. I really do appreciate all of you. As always, thank you for watching.